Yo, dude, what's up? Hey, buddy, not much, man. I'm excited for our first video together. Yeah, man, you know it. So before we started recording, you told me you went through some back roads for a nice drive and that it reminded you of something. Forza Horizon 5. Of course it did. That addiction to all things gear had just follows you everywhere. You've played it, right? Because otherwise nothing I say is going to make any sense. Yeah, of course. Although I probably haven't sunk it as much time into it as you have. And seeing how antsy you were before we started and how, how antsy you are right now, you're probably really eager to talk my ear off. And I mean, I loved it, to be sure. Yeah, it was pretty much a virtual vacation in Mexico. The game's absolutely beautiful. Uh, one of the first things I noticed early on was that Playground added a feature where you can uh, rev your car's engine while you're in the garage. And it's, it's neat because the sound changes uh, as you slowly ap apply upgrades to your car. Um, of course, it sounds the best when you slap an anti-lag system onto it because then you get that really cool backfire. Now, in the past, other games from other franchises, they've had that feature where you can rev your car in the garage. But it's nice that Playgrounds added it to, to Forza Horizon, which is, you know, their baby. And it's such a popular game, so it's it's nice to see it in there now. Right on, man. I'm, I'm really glad you had fun with that. Now, let's, let's be honest here. Did you try it with an electric car, too? Dude, this is our first video together. I don't, I don't know why you have to try and ruin the fun. Anyway, once you get on the road, the depth of the engine sounds is much more realistic than before and matches up more closely with... Uh, the real life counterparts as well um, and just as importantly vehicle dynamics match up with uh, the behaviors from the real world much more closely oh, i'm glad to hear that that's awesome and it's 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 amazing to me how much racing games have evolved over the years uh, the basic premise of course is still the same but the the increase in the level of graphical detail and the decrease in the parity between real physics and virtual physics it's 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 astonishing that's a lot of big words in one sentence but your point stands yeah i'll assume that was a compliment and something i noticed fairly early on after i started driving was that you couldn't just pull lt and to slam on the brakes and then use the handbrake to kick the back end out like you could in the older games uh, that was cool it gave you a lot of options but that's unrealistic so braking in general now requires a lot of thought and modulation and of course like when when you slow the the wheels down it affects engine speed in the game just as it should because that's how it, it happens in real life that's great yeah and and the rear wheel drive drivetrain works well for once instead of making your car slide around all over the place like it did in previous games but still, I think all-wheel drive is the way to go. I mean, with, with rear-wheel drive, you get shorter braking distances and higher lateral Gs if the simulation chart in the garage is to be believed. But the super fast straight line speed that you get with all-wheel drive is it's, you know more worth it than the negligibly higher cornering Gs and the higher braking forces that you get with uh, a real rear-wheel drive drivetrain. So it's, it's all sunshine and rainbows? It, not exactly. There's a checklist system in place, very similar to the one from the LEGO DLC in Forza Horizon 4. Of course, there's a larger discussion to be had about how concepts are carried through uh, game development, but the analysis for that and a multitude of other topics is best saved for another time. Another video. That's kind of a shame, but I mean, it's it sounds fairly minor, so I think, I think it's okay. Yeah, it is, but, but they brought back the Eliminator. You know, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't bring that up. I mean, I know you and I both have some pretty strong feelings about it, uh, about how stupid that mode really is. But this is a family-friendly episode. It's our first one. Uh, and so I think we'll leave out the cussing and rants and, and move on to something more positive then. Yeah, that's fair. Now, I haven't done too much testing on this, but I like how now when you max out a car, it falls just below the cutoff for the next class. So your maxed out car won't be a 901 instead of a 900, for example. Uh, this is a nice touch because it was really irritating in the previous games where you couldn't apply the final upgrade like an air filter just because it would bump you up into the next class and put you at the bottom end of it. Now, I'm sure someone in the comments can correct me if that does not hold consistently true. You also told me something about the transmission and, and the related options for it. Yeah, I love how the transmissions make the car sound different too. Uh, the racing transmission, it just sounds like it has straight cut teeth, you know, with the, with the high-pitched sound. 
um, and, and of course the, the drift transmission is just badass, but having played around with it, I think it's best to use it in just off-road cars. Uh, and there's a, of course, a, a, a very long discussion that can be had about power and torque curves, but in short, aerodynamic cars like your Supra and your hypercars, they're more efficient with how they put down their power. Whereas off-road cars, they're, they don't have a lot of grip available when, when they're in mud and sand. So just from the standpoint of, of ease of use, it's, it's simpler to, to throw in a drift transmission. So you're not constantly having to shift and decide, oh, you know, whether you should be in gear three or four when they're giving you very similar results. That said, I mean, I think it's best to use it in an off-road car that has a thousand plus horsepower and torque, just so it's making the best use of that drift transmission, or, or at least something close to it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that that's that's highly insightful. Yeah, that was the end of my list, so I figured I should go out with a bang. I, can I just say, that's a, that's a pretty cool hat. Right back at you, I'm glad we did this. Same here. Hey there, thanks so much for watching. It's just uh, a new concept that I, or maybe we are screwing around with. Um, you know, just like any other new idea, it's gonna evolve over time and get better. Um, but I'll stop here for now. I, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you have any thoughts or, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them for me below and I'll see you in the next one then, or rather we'll see you in the next one. So take care. Excited for our first video. Ah, ah, damn. Ah. Uh, ah, I was so close. Yes, got it. That's not going to look good. Behaviors. Yeah. I don't know what I was going to say next, so. Yeah, I don't like that. Bring Brack. Bring Brack. Right, I think that's enough.